my legs. And to wrap it up with all the physical part, because it was a very long process. It was a very long process of healing and medical treatments. I was in the hospital for a month and a half, and after that time, they finally released me. I left the hospital without rest. I had two holes on my breast and on my ribs. After a year and a half, the Lord restored my breast without any medical intervention. He was the one who filled them up. He formed my breast again. The scars, the scar that was there, came out. So I had breast again and the part where I didn't have any flesh and there was flesh again on the side of the ribs this part was the one that was the most difficult to fill because there was a big hole and the Lord filled it up after a year and a half and do you know why so many miracles and so much love because even though my ovaries were entirely burned and they told me that I was never going to have any children again the Lord gave me a beautiful daughter she is nine years old and her name is Maria Jose such a beautiful and great gift but the most beautiful thing about all this and I tell you this with so much shame when I was struck by lightning at that very moment, my life was in chaos due to so many things that were happening and due to all the knowledge that I acquired during my whole life that I ended up not believing in God when the lightning bolt struck me. I thought that a human being, when the person died, it was the end of it. Irrational animal that develops its intellect to its fullness and that's it there's nothing else at that time I was studying with a lot of scientists who were atheists and I would allow myself to be blown as a feather on the wind so when I was with the atheist my doctrine was atheism therefore the most beautiful thing when I was struck by lightning and I want to ask you to forgive me because I have no words to describe that beautiful gift when the lightning bolt struck me I never stopped I saw my body lying there burned but I was enveloped by an immense light in so much love in so much peace in an infinite love in an eternal joy it is something that it cannot be described I started to go up and I saw an immense light and at that moment I am entirely free of time and free of space I'm in that eternal fullness in that eternal love that nobody can describe in such a big joy that I never experienced that kind of thing in my whole life nor peace nor the kind of love that I experienced so immense so as I started to go up and I start getting closer to that light I saw all the people in an instant I hugged them all and I wanted all of them to feel the love that I felt and nobody felt me only my oldest daughter who was nine years old back then she was the only one who felt when I hugged her as I started going up it was such a beautiful moment I saw my parents I saw my grandparents everybody was there it was a beautiful moment of communion and I kept going up and as I kept going up I saw that beautiful light and in that light there was an opening when I looked at the opening I realized at that moment 
because at that moment there was this spiritual wisdom over me, a knowledge that was above my mental process. It was beating because he was alive. Then I saw at that moment that that living light that was beating of love was the heart of Jesus. It is the heart of Jesus. Him. Right there. He had an opening on his side, and that opening was a door. It was a wound, and as I get closer to there, beyond the opening, I saw a lake. I just can't describe it, the beauty and the greatness. Our words are so poor, and I just don't have the words to describe it. I wanted to go in, but at that moment I heard the voice of my husband, who was screaming at me, Gloria, please do not go. Come back, don't be such a coward. The children, Gloria. At that moment, I was sent back. I did not have liberty and I did not have free will. If I had free will, I would have fought to stay, but that would have never been possible because the only people who go inside are the ones who are in the grace of God. And I was by no means in the grace of God. When I was sent back and I entered my body, my body went into a seizure. And it was very painful to go into my body. And I was extremely burned. And there was so much pain in my, my entire body and I experienced a lot of pain due to my vanity. So when I had my second cardiac arrest, I had a different experience in the operating room because I saw how from the walls of the operating room, a lot of people came out and they had so much hate in their eyes. They had evil eyes. At first, I tried to reason what was happening in a human way, so I said to myself, I'm just hallucinating because I don't have enough oxygen. These idiots have me hypoxia, which means low oxygen. And at that moment, this spiritual wisdom came over me again, and I had this knowledge above my mental process and I realized that it was all the sins that I committed since I was 13 years old up to the last moment of my life why since I was 13 years old well because I died when I was 13 years old people think that dying means when you are buried but no that's not how it is I died when I was 13 years old because when I was 13 years old I abandoned a life of faith so I left the hands of God I left the hands of my mom and I started living according to what the world says that a happy young person is but I was not a happy person since I was 13 years old and up. So I'm going to share with you about my death, the death I had when I was 13 years old, and that has nothing to do with the accident. When I was 13 years old, I was a child from a small town. I was very happy until I was 13. My mother was an adorer of the Blessed Sacrament. She was a very poor woman, but she had an incredible love towards the Blessed Sacrament. She was a holy woman. And when I was in my town, I loved God dearly. I loved the Blessed Virgin Mary. I loved to go to Mass. I loved to visit the sick and to visit the homeless people. My family was a poor family. But we were never short in food to give someone poorer than us some food. But when I moved to Bogota and I got to meet these 
friends, I formed part of a group of rebel girls. Supposedly they were very smart, and I say this in quotation marks. Supposedly they knew everything. And in less than three months, less than three months, they had money and they bought a lot of things with the money. And in the three months, I was thinking like them. Because they said it was very modern and very cool. And I wanted to think like them. So to me, it was very normal to see my friends going to bed with their boyfriends. I started seeing like something normal that they had abortions. I came to find out what an abortion was. I saw everything that they practiced and I started seeing everything that they do. And I became a photocopy of them. How sad. So when I was 13 years old, I went with a witch so that they can tell me my fortune with the cards. I fell into divination, horoscopes, the zodiac, and all those kinds of things. And I started reading books of meditation, of mental power, when I was 13 years old. So I died when I was 13 years old. And one sin brings another sin. I rebelled against my mom. She became my enemy because she would talk to me about God and she would talk to me about the virginity of women. But my friends spoke to me everything that was opposite to that. So when I was 13 years old, I started listening to the music, to rock and roll music. And I wanted to go with my friends, but my mother wouldn't allow me. So my mom became tedious to me. And when I was there, free of the hand of God, full of sin, I started hating the church. I became anti-clerical, just like my friends, because I was a copy of them. I would speak bad about priests, so I did not have to go to confession, because it's easier for us to look at the sin of others than to look at our sins. So I did not confess anymore, and that was the most terrible thing that happened in my life. I never went to confession again. I did not live a life sacramentally. And that's the reason why the sins came out since I was 13 years old. When I realized that sin was alive and that sin has a pay and the payment was me, all the rich and all the poor people doesn't matter. At that moment of the encounter, all your richness, all your studies, all your intelligence, everything is left behind. None of that is worth anything. The only thing that's worthy is reality. And the reality is that if you live without God, the sins will come and get you. I started running with horror that I do not know at what time. I passed the wall of the operating room. As I passed the wall of the operating room, I entered some sort of living cells. At the beginning, those cells had a lot of light and you could feel peace, a lot of peace and a lot of love. And I saw many people in those living cells. It was like a labyrinth. I don't know how to explain it. I do not know what name to give it. And all those people were dressed like the sun. Their garments were like the sun, like an immense light. And I realized that those garments that looked like the sun, they were all those Eucharistic people who receive our Lord Jesus every day in the Eucharist. So they were dressed like the Lamb of God. So an immense light shone from their garments. They were the image of Christ because every time they received the Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus would dress them with his flesh and his blood. So 